Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. And as you know, every month we strive to focus on a different department, roles and responsibilities, and give you an opportunity to get a little more insight about Sheboygan County Government. And today, we're very pleased to have a rookie across <laughs> from us, one of our newest additions to our management team, Cindy Circadi. Cindy, welcome. Well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. It's wonderful to have Cindy here. Cindy, I say new because the UW Extension just went through a reorganization, and Cindy is not just a Sheboygan County Department head, she actually is an Area Extension Director working with a number of counties. So let's get right into it, and please begin by sharing a little bit about yourself, Cindy. All right. I uh, come from a, a background of, in Extension. I started in Michigan many years ago, and I was a 4-H educator. And, um, and when I eventually moved to Illinois, I wasn't an extension, but I was an administrator at a community college, large community college. And um, I learned a lot of my leadership development through there. Um, when that, um, when the college downsized, I came back to extension in Illinois, and was a 4-H educator there. I've always loved Wisconsin, so when the opportunity in Waukesha came available to move, I did, and I was a 4-H educator there. And then this opportunity of the Area Extension Director opened, and I said, oh, what? I can make a bigger impact doing this uh, position, which now I'm here. Yeah, and, and I'll readily admit, as Cindy knows, when she first was hired, it's, you know, it's a little unusual working with a number of departments, being the department head in a number of counties, rather, and I thought, well, how is this going to fit in with our team and do I want someone in our monthly meetings that is not only a department head identified for Sheboygan County but for a number of other counties and I quickly appreciated how kind Cindy is as well as the fact that you can bring this additional insight and perspective and talk about best practices of other counties and, and really I think add, adds value to our discussion. So. Please touch on that briefly, that, you know, how many different counties are you working with to give folks a flavor for your area of responsibility? I have four counties. I have uh, Fond du Lac, Sheboygan, Washington, and Ozaukee counties. Um, with the restructure, some of uh, the counties merged with two, others some up to five. So I have four. Yeah. Well, let's get into Extension itself a little bit. What is, what is the mission, primary responsibilities of UW Extension? The mission of uh, educators in, in, uh, with UW Extension is to lead, teach, and serve the community by bringing the resources of the university out into the communities, of course, and the individuals to help them transform their lives and their communities. Yeah, and when you, you know, when folks think of UW Extension, I'm sure many of our viewers are, well, my kids were involved in 4-H, mm -hmm. or I was, there are a number of areas of responsibility. Extension is one of our 19 departments, but it's funded a little differently. How does that work? Yeah, our, our partners and our funding are uh, local and state and uh, federally funded, depending on you know what programs we offer. So a lot more collaboration mm -hmm. and leveraging resources from these, these different units of government, mm -hmm. which sometimes can create a little stress as well. Will the state or fed or local government provide their share? Will it go up or down? And that was part of the reorganization a little bit, some of those financial constraints, wasn't it? Yeah, they had to reduce um, funding or the, the cost of extension by $3.6 million. So. so as you've looked at your team and if, you know, someone was sitting across from you today and said, well, share a little bit about what UW Extension encompasses. What type of what staff are you working with? What are their key areas of responsibility? In Sheboygan County, we have um, a, a growth management educator, and you've known about Kevin Struck that does the comprehensive plans in the, in the townships and the, in the villages and the cities uh, in Sheboygan County. We also have youth development, which is a 4-H program that you uh, all, everybody's familiar with. We have family living that works with um, coalitions, uh, healthy, uh, 2020 healthy Sheboygan County. Um, we have a FoodWise program that most people don't know about. That's a federally funded uh, program, and that's where our educators go into the schools, work with pantries, um, and there's a certain um, income level that we, we work with, and it's totally federally funded. And then everybody knows about the agricultural programs that Extension uh, works with. Yeah, and we've been fortunate. We really have some experienced staff here at 
UW Extension and obviously well known in the community. You mentioned Kevin Strzok, mm -hmm. Mike Balweg of course mm -hmm. works with the agriculture community. But just briefly talk about your coworkers a little bit and, and the strengths they bring to the table. Well, in Extension, in, in Sheboygan County too, obviously, to be an Extension educator, you have to have a passion about what what you do, and you really have to want to help the community. So with Jane Jensen in the, um, in the Family Living Program, she really brings that ability to get people together with the coalitions that she works with. Sarah Targison and 4-H Youth Development and Linda Robson, they, they love it. I mean, yeah. you, if you listen to them talk about their programs, they just shine. Um, uh, Mike, you know, he always educates me on the agriculture because, you know, I had a hobby farm, you know, growing up. I didn't do the cover crops that, you know, he's so well known to educate, the, you know, the community on. And then, of course, Kevin with his uh, growth management. And uh, it's always interesting to listen to what he's doing. Yeah, really good people. And Tom and I both have had the opportunity at the county fair to participate in the 4-H, what do they call that? Uh, it's kind of... When we're serving... Uh at their stand, serving oh, the sh stand. shakes, the food, yep, stand, the food and, stand, and it always amazes me, these young people, Absolutely. how good they are. You know, they're, they're hardworking and they're so kind and they're good with the customers and it's not only a good experience for us, but it's certainly a good experience for them. Yeah, the, uh, and they're extremely tolerant of me. So <laughs> <that's good. laughs> you know, and the, and my mistakes. The, you would really love that opportunity because it's, um, they're, uh, they're giving to the community. They're learning these skills. They learn how to work cooperatively together. Uh, you know, develop those life skills that 4-H is known um, for. And uh, our 4-H program in Sheboygan County is uh, probably about the third or fourth largest in the state. We have over 942 uh, youth that participate in the community clubs and 262 uh, adult volunteers, which is huge. It's amazing. And then uh, also we have uh, youth volunteers, about 118 of them. So they really uh, do a lot. Yeah, and as I mentioned, and as I think some of our viewers are aware, you know, Sheboygan County is such a breadth, breadth of programs and services, 19 different departments. UW Extension is one of those 19, yet kind of a hybrid with a relationship with the local, state, and federal level. And some people may wonder, well, what's the difference between UW Extension and UW Sheboygan? What is the difference? Uh, well, UW Sheboygan is a college campus. They offer credited classes. And UW Extension <coughs> offers educational opportunities that are not credited, but they're still just as valued, non-formal education. Um, so that's, that's kind of the difference. We are under the, we will be underneath the same umbrella uh, with the reorg, so, um, we're still UW, Wisconsin, just the extension part of it. Yeah. So if you're not familiar with where UW Extension is, it's right here co-located with UW Sheboygan, mm -hmm. right across from Bookworm Gardens. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful setting and the county board had the vision a number of years ago to co-locate the two as not only an efficiency opportunity, but really it helped leverage resources between the two, uh, camp the campus and mm -hmm. extension. So, well, thank you. I'll turn it over to Tom. Well, welcome, Cindy. Thank you. I'm glad you could be here. Uh, and you've talked a little bit about this already, but could you go into maybe a little more detail about some of the scope of the services that the extension offers? Um, all right, let's see. In youth development, uh, we do a youth government program, and that's working with the county uh, department heads to really show the, the, the teens about how they can um, see what government does, because it's, I think it's a very big idea and it doesn't make sense to them. So the, the opportunity, Sarah, is uh, working with um, the county uh, department heads to have them help educate the youth. So that's one area. We have a Master Gardeners program that's through the agricultural program. That That's huge here. Uh, and you know that they um, do educational programs throughout the, the county. I know they do stuff at UW Sheboygan. You know, it's not that uh, some uh, misconception with the Master Gardeners that they'll come in and do the garden. <laughs> education. UW Extension Education. Master <laughs> Gardeners are part of that. They'll help educate you and teach you how to do it in the, um, the programs. The family living, I know we do, uh, we have um, Jane that works with, uh, it's a caregivers uh, coalition. Um, she's had uh, great success that she offers uh, quarterly um, workshops and reaches about 60 organizations and about 212 individuals for those opportunities. And then of course our agriculture, we talked a little bit about Mike and his, um, the cover crops that uh, 
education, but there's more than that. What's interesting about the agriculture um, extension uh, is that there's a tri-county, so we work already across these county lines. They've been doing this already with Ozaki County and Fond du Lac County and Washington County, so there's experts in the ag. Mike is, of course, the cover crops. We have somebody in farm succession, farm management. We have dairy, so they share their expertise. That's kind of the way we're moving with this. This yeah. is the way we are moving with the restructuring. Lots of moving parts. Mm -hmm. uh, what role does the agriculture play in, in Sheboygan County? It's huge. You know, I did my, you know, I've talked to Mike quite a bit, but I also did more research on it. And I was surprised to find, because I just moved to Sheboygan County in September, that uh, we have over uh, 8,000 um, um, jobs in agriculture, and that's 12% of the jobs in Sheboygan County. The, the agriculture accounts for $3.1 billion in economic um, activity. And in over, I, I'm reading my numbers because That's I fine. thought it was very That's impressive fine. to see this. Over $7 million comes to the county in uh, total income from agriculture. Um, so it, to me, that was pretty impressive to read. I know that mm -hmm. we have a lot of farms, but to bring in that kind of money into our county is huge. Right. Good, thank you. Uh, community growth management, I know, is very important, and I've worked with Kevin Strzok, who mm -hmm. is out of your office, actually, on the Revolving Loan Committee for SCDC. And I know he also works with the different towns and that on some of the smart growth plans and things like that. Could you describe a little more how that is in, how is he involved in that and how that goes? Well, Kevin's uh, unique to the state. There are not, and you know, he's one of the, I think he's the only growth management educator in the state. No kidding. Um, so he works uh, with the Wisconsin stature, uh, they, the community comprehensive uh, plans have to be updated no less than every 10 years. And so he goes in and he helps them develop these plans. Now, he doesn't do it because we're educators. Right. Right. He helps uh, the process. Um, and what's interesting, it really saves these uh, towns a, a significant amount of money because if they had to bring in um, a consultant, it's about $20,000 to do exactly what right. Kevin does. Mm -hmm. So, No, I've heard that from different town uh, mm -hmm. chairmen of that. Uh, very positive about having Kevin work in and help them with that because A, they're saving them money, and B, at the end of the day, they feel they've got a good product that they've really built. Uh, oh, yeah. Rather than when you bring yep. sometimes a consultant, and it can kind of be the consultants, you know. So I know it's working very well in Sheboygan County mm -hmm. from what I've been hearing. So yeah. yeah. And if great. I could just add sure. on to that, Tom, Kevin used to work in our planning department. So he, he comes with a real strong skill set. He knows the community. He knows these local officials. And mm -hmm. just as you said, Tom, I've heard really positive things about the work he does with Absolutely. the local units of government. Yeah. He also works with our, I think, our conservation side a little bit with water quality testing. Yeah. Yeah, the, the well testing, he goes out and offers um, where they bring the samples in and then he takes the samples and they go to UW-Stevens Point for the testing and brings the results back and helps educate them what it means if you have arsenic in your water or yeah. whatever else is in it. So yes, that, he does do that too. Very important, obviously. Uh, community growth, uh, excuse me, UW Extension has been over 100 years, um, so it's serving a broader and diverse audience more than ever. Uh, can you give me some examples besides family living, maybe, or things like that? You talked a little bit about it already. Yeah. Well, our food wise, the federally funded one, it has over 3,000 contacts, educational contacts, you know, direct where they go out and teach into the schools and the pantries. So that's one area, and we talked about 4 H youth development, you know, and um, uh, um, Sarah, she focuses on citizenship because all the youth development educators do look at what are the needs in the community and that was one of the focuses that she's been working on so that that governance program that we talked about, government, you know, is, is part of that. Um, agriculture, they had 550 uh, participants in their ag, their field days and their workshops and that's just a small percentage of what they do. Educators, in addition to doing this outreach and, and, um, and doing the educational opportunities, um, most of them are faculty, and ours are faculty, the majority of them, and so they produce uh, research projects and they create documents that are shared beyond the state. So what's happening here goes even further beyond. That's a requirement right. for the faculty. I know getting back a little bit to the 4-H, uh, when I'm out at the, the fair helping them serve, it, what is always impressive to me is there's a whole lot of different things going on there relative to what the kids can learn, but just being able to approach 
a stranger who comes up and mm -hmm. just interact with them mm -hmm. and be able to speak to them and that type of thing I think is really helpful to a 12 year old kid they or 13 do, year old. They can do to five when they're in the program. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah the public speaking is probably the top skill that they develop in, in 4-H because yeah. um, they do talk to their judges, of course they're talking to their, their groups, you know, in their, in their clubs, but really public speaking is the top one. And like I said, I've heard uh, seven-year-olds tell me a whole speech, yes. uh, which is pretty impressive. Yeah. And uh, most people that don't, uh, don't realize that, they'll be amazed. And I, I know I've interviewed college students for different jobs. And if they can talk to me, I always ask, what are you, 4-H? Yes. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are. Right. We have two or three of them usually come every year to the county to board, board and, and give a presentation. And uh, they're always very impressive. And some of them are pretty young, too. And yeah. they do a very nice job. They have to have a stool so they can get to the <laughs> microphone. But very nice program. Yeah, good. Yeah. Adam? Yeah, I, when we go to the county fair every year, I think of my kids that are now out of the nest, but you know, we've had chickens and horses and you know, hobby farm as you described, you grew up on. And, and as Tom said, you know, the opportunities for youth to get involved and take responsibility. Last year at the county fair, I bought a couple of chickens at this, I don't know if he was 14 years old and he had, he you know, raised these chickens as from chicks and mm -hmm. they were the most, groomed beautiful hens I think I've I've ever seen and he was so pleased to then sell them after the fair to a family that was going to continue to take care of them and enjoy the farm fresh eggs so I I really admire what Sarah and Linda do and and all the staff at UW Extension if you think about all of our departments though extension is not necessarily a required area of responsibility like some of our um, departments are, you know, health and human services, clerk of courts, there are so many things we have to do. Extension we don't necessarily have to do, but from a standpoint of how many people they touch in this community and the good things they help make happen, uh, we're just very fortunate to have a strong staff here and, and I, I appreciate and value what they do. So on that note, you started sharing a little bit about the organizational structure and relying on county funding, state funding, and federal funding. It's a long-term partnership that's been around, as Tom said, for 100 years. We have this co-location now with UW Sheboygan, which I thought has brought additional value and leveraged additional resources. But as viewers listen to this and they think, hmm, I don't know, I don't know a lot about what Jane does with maybe the elderly or those types of programs, or I don't have any kids that were in 4-H, how does extension determine its priorities and where it's going to focus in a community? Well, in the past, and I say in the past because there's going to be a new uh, needs assessment coming up, there were needs assessments done in the communities. Um, there's focus groups, they talk, the educators talk with the partners out in the community, I do that too to listen, um, but they really look at an individual county and what the needs are and then they develop their program, program area, program development in the, to address those needs. So in the future, in the, hopefully by summer, that's what we're shooting for, we'll have a statewide needs assessment. That'll be very uh, um, current, relevant uh, to what we want them to do with this reorganization. And obviously you have a liaison committee. Every department mm -hmm. has a county board liaison committee that helps establish policy and provides input. Uh, you have one that's you know, made up of county board supervisors, and I know they're very supportive and very yeah. engaged. You get feedback there as well? Yeah, they do. They're very, uh, very uh, supportive, and it's interesting when I bring up different uh, components of our, uh, our monthly report, they can add to it at first-hand experience. They'll say, well, yeah, I heard this one did this and this one did that, and uh, so it's very uh, impressive that they, they really know what we're doing. Not just reading what we send them, but they know because they're, of course, of the community. And all those meetings are open to the public, mm -hmm. so if mm -hmm. someone wanted to come and, and listen, learn, or provide input or suggest mm -hmm. improvements, they can do that. Yes, they can. Yeah, yeah. So state, federal, local funds, we've just gone through this reorg. Big picture, what were the predominant changes that have, that have occurred? We're still going through the restructuring. It's, I think it's been over two years now. I came in over two years ago and it was starting then. <clears throat> the regionalization, having the area extension directors like I am, um, and then um, 
we are going to be looking at shared positions across county lines. We already do that in some areas. In Ozaukee County, we have an ag educator that goes between Ozaukee and Washington County. Um, and also, the changes are to really look at what programs we are delivering and making sure they're relevant. Um, you know, in some counties, and uh, you know, they did canning. I know um, they do canning programs. Well, is that really a need here in Sheboygan County? We do not do that um, because that isn't a high need. But there are other things that are uh, uh, a high need in the area. So that needs assessment will help direct a little bit more. Mm -hmm. A lot of the restructuring is um, infrastructures that uh, with moving underneath the, the UW Madison, you know, we have, we'll have our HRs are now the same instead of having this extension HR. So there's a lot of systems changes that won't really be seen mm -hmm. by our communities, but we're really committed to, have, with, to the Wisconsin idea of having extension in all the counties. And it's a credit to, to Chairman Tom Wagner and the full county board for seeing, you know, already, f how long has it been now since we've been co-located here? Has it been oh, six, seven years? Easily. You know, easily. I, I lose track of time, but back then the board saw this as an opportunity for further alignment and administrative efficiencies and leveraging resources. And we took a little bit of heat uh, leaving Sheboygan Falls mm -hmm. and, you know, what was a uh, a well-oiled machine there as well, but the op the opportunity to further leverage resources, cost savings, and I think history has shown it was a it was a visionary move by the county mm -hmm. board, and now the state is aligning even more, more you know, right. which really positioned us better, I presume, than some counties who aren't co-located and haven't yet leveraged those resources. No, and in the, in, the, in extension, we work with states. Specialist. But now we are even, with having that co-location with UW Sheboygan, we have the opportunity to do it, walk down the hall, and find these specialists instead of being right. on campus. And we have already. In the short period of time I've been here, I know they've done things in the past, but just in the short period of time we've had faculty and administrators help us with our scholarships for our youth, you know, look them over and say, we can help teach the 4-H youth how to write successful scholarships. So that's just the start of our partnerships. Um, Tremendous. That I've seen, some, and I, like I said, they've done things in the past. You mentioned you worked with four counties. Again, mm -hmm. it was Sheboygan, Fond du Lac, Ozaki, Ozaki and, Washington. And, and Washington. What has been your impression of the four facilities and engagement of staff? Um, have you, what strengths have you seen in Sheboygan, perhaps, compared to other counties? Opportunities for improvement here? What I've noticed across that. Uh, all the four counties that the educators are really dedicated uh, and they're resilient. This change has been uh, sure. a tough because, uh, you know, a lot of unknowns. But I'm going to tell you, in all the counties, they're moving forward. They're delivering programs. They're doing what they, you know, that we, what we've always been intended to do. Um, the expertise in Sheboygan, you know, you have a long series. People have been here for a long period of time. That helps quite a bit um, for Sheboygan County and for the state because they give to the state to the, the educational component. They're looked to um, as huge resources in, uh, in the state and with their expertise. Um, best practices, uh, that's, that's been uh, something that's ongoing, you know, Every uh, budget process is a little different, and I have to learn, you know, four different budget processes. Right. But the our um, our support staff in all of the areas have been they've jumped on that bandwagon. They want to help improve the practices that they're doing. They want to share, and they've they've started at the very beginning. I said, well, you know, this this county has a really good budget in Fond du Lac. They have a really good budget budgeting um, documentation. When I sent it over to the support staff here in Sheboygan, she had it done in an hour, and it's years of. Um, you know, why we cut, why we increase, why we did that. Um, so they're just really um, willing to go that extra step in, in Sheboygan County, especially the support staff. They're, they're kind of excited about it. We got together uh, recently, all the four uh, counties, and I think they talked so much that they wanted more time to talk, to be able to share mm -hmm. what they're doing and how we can work together. And, and, uh, they're, you know, so, and that's positive to me. How about the facilities here? What, what's oh, been your impression of our facilities? Outstanding, facility? outstanding. Uh, to the IT department, with me not being a county employee, the IT department still was there to help me maneuver. Everybody's been so helpful within um, 
Sheboygan County, and uh, the facilities is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, well, glad to hear you say that. We we pride our, ourselves on collaboration here and working effectively together, and, and I think you've brought that to another level is now working with, with three other counties to, mm -hmm. to share services and expertise, and I think it's a win-win across the board. So thank you for that. Thank you. Well, we only have a couple of minutes left, and I wanted to go back to something Cindy said a few minutes ago. We have an annual student government day where students from across the school district throughout Sheboygan County uh, come and get a snapshot, a glimpse of Sheboygan County government, the 19 different departments. There's over 200 programs and services, and of course in one day they can't learn about it all. But they get a, a high-end overview in our elected department heads, uh, Sarah Targerson from UW Extension and a few other department heads as well have gotten more engaged and I want to thank Extension for doing that because with workforce development needs if you're in high school and thinking about a career county government has so much to offer and most people as you said earlier Cindy just don't realize the breadth from health and human services to UW Extension to planning and conservation to a sheriff's department to a, a nursing home I mean there's so much going on so uh, I appreciate the role Extension plays but I also appreciate the role of our veterans our legionnaires mm -hmm. who co-sponsor that with UW Extension mm -hmm. correct yes they do they do help with that they have the part of the curriculum that's um, that we've expanded upon to offer more opportunities um, and um, some funding to help help with yeah. that program so it is a good partnership folks like Alan Knoll who's been a champion in the veterans organization for a lot of years helps with the the beautiful uh, veterans memorial that we have there at Taylor Park and again a shout out to our legionnaires and all our veterans not only for their service but their assistance with this program it's a good program and we appreciate their involvement and speaking of our veterans, next month we're going to have Charlene Cobb here, our veteran service officer, to talk a little bit about their roles and responsibilities. So, Cindy, we want to say thank you for your time today, giving us an overview of UW Extension. If anyone has any questions about UW Extension, don't hesitate to contact Cindy or her staff. You can go on our county website to get direct information or come on out to UW Sheboygan and check out the UW Extension office area. Take a, a walk across the street to uh, Bookworm Gardens. Mm -hmm. Although, is Bookworm Gardens open yet? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Probably yeah, need another chilly. month of warm weather, right? Yeah. But it's a great way to spend a lunch hour or a couple of hours with your kids or grandkids. So hope you'll come out and visit. And again, Cindy, welcome aboard and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. So we'll see you next month. Veteran Service Officer Charlene Cobb will be here. As I said, a lot of good things happening with our Veteran Service Officer staff and, and the programs and services. We can talk more about that. And until then, thank you for joining us today and be well. Thank you.